what we're going to do is let's put in a, another pivot table, insert pivot table, existing worksheet. Let's go to our location and put in that and press OK. OK, so we've created another pivot table. So in here, let's drop in our sales month in the row labels and the financial year in the column labels. We'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so the other thing that we're going to do now is put in our sales in there. Okay, so let's just make a few cosmetic changes, which I like, and then we can get going. Okay, here we are. Let's get rid of the grand total. We can just click in there, right click, remove grand total. All right. So let's bring our field list in here and just move this a bit in here. So, okay, instead of doing that, let's just, we can just keep it there. That's fine. Make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so you can all see that. All right. So let's go back into our pivot table to activate our field list. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put in there a, another metric which is called the dollar of running total in or year to date. To do this, you've got to grab the sales and drop it into your values area. Okay, from in here, click value field settings. Now instead of summarize the values by, which is what I showed you guys before, Let's go to show values as. And from in here, you have an array of different calculations, okay? So I'm gonna go through every one of them now. I'll go through, I'll just show you a couple of different ones, okay? Now, let's go to the running total in. Okay, running total in. So running total in means year to date. Okay, so to give us, the total per month and it will accumulate the previous month and then add it on and it will give us a year to date, okay? Just in simple terms. Now the base field, we want to make the base field being the month because that's what we're going to increment, okay? So we're gonna show values as the running total in on a monthly basis, okay? That's how you read this. Press okay. All right, so let's get out of this here. Now, what I'm gonna do is just show 2012, okay? So, right click, number format, all right. Here we are. So what it does is it adds 771,000 in January, and then it adds 867 in here, okay? So those two there, the sum is 1638. Now, if you can't see this here, right click, and make sure that your sum is activated. This is a cool tip to, to use all the time. Um, you can have the average count, sum, maximum, minimum. So whenever you choose a selection of sales, it gives you just some quick metrics, okay? So it shows us here, it's 1638, which is in there. Okay, Jan to March, 2.4 million, which is in there. You can see it increments all the way to the total. Okay, let's activate our field list again. What I'm gonna do now is just drop in the year, okay, I'm going to drop in the year. First of all, let's clear the filter for the year. So we're going to show everything. Grab the year and drop it into the row labels, okay. So we just have the years and the months going in there, okay. So now you can see we've done that. It does the same thing for each year. It starts in the new year and it adds the year to date, okay, for that particular year, which is, you can move around and and still has that metric there. Now, I wanna add in another one, which is the difference from the previous month. Okay, so once again, grab the sales and drop it in here. So once we drop it into the values area, we can do as many metrics as we like, okay? Drop down arrow, value fuel settings, show values as. Now, we're gonna show the difference from the previous month. Now, drop down box there, and go down to difference from. Okay, now the base item previous and the base field month. Just make sure there's a, there's a 
correct? Okay, so what it says here is it's going to show us the values as the difference from the previous month. That's how you read it. For. Difference from previous month and press OK. All right, so let me just format this a little bit better. Get rid of that. Okay, number format. And I like to put in a minus red for the negatives, okay? It just stands out. So what it gives us is just a difference between the previous month. So the difference between Jan and Feb, you can see there was an increase of 95,000. And then there then was a decrease of 83,000 from Feb to March. And then March to April, there was an increase of 124 and so on and so on. Okay, so you can see the difference from the previous month. So you've got all these different metrics and you've got heaps more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, in my Extreme Pivot Table course, I go through every single item. So every single item that you see in here, okay, all this, I go through every single one, okay? So you can see the power within a pivot table and you don't have to use formulas. You don't have to use formulas. You just got to choose the right buttons and then you have it there. And if your information gets updated in your data source with another 100,000 rows, all you got to do is go back in here, right click, refresh, and it gets updated. Imagine that, the power of that. You can show that to your boss take a screenshot and say, hey, this is how business is going. This is how our products are trending. And you can make some insightful business decisions. And I'm telling you, you're gonna be the go-to person in your job once you master pivot tables. Well, you don't really have to master them. You just learned it now. So if you can just show this, you'll become a master in your work. Imagine if you learn every single different um, item that you can do with the pivot table, then you'll be doing courses like myself.